So let me look at some of these issues of the EBIT multiple and perhaps I'll give you some information which will help you understand much better how you can reposition your business to gain a higher valuation. Let's take a look at these EBIT multiples and see what we can learn by unpacking them. Firstly, EBIT multiple is a norm. It's used across many industries as the default valuation method. It's very common to see EBIT norms of 2 and 4 and 6. And I've often talked to entrepreneurs about their industries and what the norm is. And you do get this spread between different multiples. But most of them can't understand why that particular multiple applies in their industry or how they might move, for example, from a 4 to a 6. What they do know is that growth rates push up multiples. But where they're stuck is that the EBIT typically is an average of historical earnings and doesn't reflect the growth potential in the business. It's basically a convention. It's been established over many, many years. It's very simple to use. Both buyers and sellers can understand it very quickly. But there's still this question of why 2, why 4, why 6? The argument goes that this is based on industry dynamics. So some industries are more risky than others. Some industries have shorter life cycles of businesses and technology. And some industries have much higher levels of uncertainty. And this is used to argue between, let's say, a 2 and a 4. What we're trying to get to, though, is something that represents value in a particular business. But generally, we keep coming back to some form of comparable. And the question is, does the average apply to you? What we see is that sellers are price takers. This model is imposed upon them. They don't feel they've got room for manoeuvring or for expressing their belief about the quality of their business and its longer term potential. All their advisors tend to use the same method and so therefore they're so locked into this argument where they can't move from a conventional norm. When they want to know why a particular multiple applies, it gets back to a judgment call. It's almost that it's more art than science. What's clear is the entrepreneur is not in control of their own destiny. Let's move instead to investment valuation. Now, investment valuation historically has been based on an investment formula composed around the discounting of future earnings. And here we can see if the discount rate increases, then those income streams further out in the future are hit harder and harder in terms of establishing the net present value. So the net present value represents the discounted future earnings for a particular investment. So where we use a lower discount rate, the investment value for the same income stream is much, much higher. So the discount rate then represents risk in the investment. But the lower the discount rate, the higher level of visibility of future earnings you need in order to represent the proper value of the business. What I did was I took a net present value using a constant income stream and applied some different discount rates over a 20 year period. And what you can see is that a two times EBIT is a surrogate for a 50% discount rate. And the numbers really go close to zero once you're beyond six years. A four times EBIT is close to a 25% discount rate. Again, your horizon is probably out about 10 years. And a six times EBIT is an approximation for a 15% discount rate. Again, a horizon of about 15 years. The discount rate reflects the risk and the number of years that have an effective impact on the net present value reflects visibility of future earnings. What we can do now is that since we know that it's about risk and visibility, we can work on both of these elements of the net present value formula. So for example, we can dramatically reduce risk by putting in better systems 
better governance, better internal operations, performance measuring and monitoring. We can look to increase our recurring revenue and decrease volatility in the business and try to reduce any potential liabilities. From a visibility point of view, clearly what we're interested in is finding higher probabilities for future earnings. So longer term contracts, more recurring revenue, greater customer loyalty, the use of long term contracts and reducing volatility and instability in the business will get you longer term visibility of earnings. When you put these two together, a lower discount rate and longer term visibility, it can have a dramatic effect on valuation. So for example, if we can decrease the discount rate from 50% to 15% and we can increase the visibility of future earnings, then moving from 50% to 15% is effectively moving from a 2 times EBIT to a 6 times EBIT and that will get you a 3 times increase in valuation. That's pretty dramatic. But more particularly, it allows you to take much better control over your valuation, understanding that it's a combination of risk and visibility and that these are two aspects of your business that you can work on which will increase the valuation over time. So as we've seen, risk and visibility are essential characteristics in trying to arrive at an investment value. And these are both elements that you can work on. Of course you can always increase the profit but do it on a sustainable basis.